infowarstore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Hacking is bad, unless, of course, you're doing it for the U.S. government. When you go to the airport, reports show that the NSA gets info from your online searches during your flight. It's been reported that GoGo, one of the main Wi-Fi suppliers to U.S. airplanes, supplies data to U.S. authorities. Outside of airlines, we've seen companies such as Microsoft, which makes the Xbox, implicated in the PRISM scandal. But if you hack a company that makes video games, get ready for a visit from the FBI. And if you expose the PRISM system in general, get ready to seek asylum and be labeled an enemy of the state. And if the feds just so happen to find another way into your device, such as the heart bleed bug, they say that it's no big deal. 70% of all computers use a program that has had a major flaw for over two years. And this flaw allows hackers to get in and read encrypted mail, encrypted communications of all kinds, uh, without our knowledge. Now, keep in mind, this has been going on for two years and we just now discovered it. I think it's one of the problems with American corporations. Uh, they've become lazy. Uh, rather than building things in the proper way, uh, they rely on open source, which is free, and everybody goes, oh, this is great, this is good stuff. But this is what happens. Uh, so 70% of all computers in the world have been compromised by this bug, which is two years old. But back to video games. It's been reported that an Iranian Marine was recruited by the CIA to make video games that make players sympathetic to U.S. foreign policy. Finally, it has also come out that the feds are posing as online gamers in order to track the habits of players. They say it's so terrorists can't exchange information in online games, but I think it's the FBI wanting to know just as much about your fantasy life as they do about your real life. You can find more reports at InfoWars.com. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure the sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. The globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. The key is to be aware of this attack and to fight back against it. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs harvested around the planet and then concentrated for maximum potency. I've always believed in nutrition and herbs. Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality and other powerful products from InfoWars Life. First they assassinate your character, then they assassinate you. The vilification of Clive and Bundy by the mainstream media is now in full force. They've accused him of being a tax evader, but most troubling is this exchange where the label of sovereign citizen is thrown at him. That's a hot button label that effectively puts a bounty on his head as a terrorist as far as law enforcement is concerned. Your stance is, I do not recognize these lands to be federal, and I am 
you're on a one-man movement. Because of the way you're talking about sheriffs and you're talking about state sovereignty, they're, they're claiming that you are potentially affiliated with the sovereign citizen movement. Is that something that you find yourself affiliated with? Do you think those people are crazy? No, I don't know. I don't know even what they are. And Who needs a Southern Poverty Law Center when you've got people like Glenn Beck to do their work for them? Bundy was not saying he was a sovereign citizen. He was saying that the state of Nevada and the sheriff were sovereign here, that it was a jurisdictional issue. Glenn Beck and the Blaze should have known better. Bundy had tried to explain to Beck Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17 of the Constitution, also known as the Enclave Clause. It's the clear intention of the Constitution to prohibit the federal government from owning large portions of state land, expressly limiting it to 10 square miles of the District of Columbia and to the land needed for forts and docks, etc. It's a violation of both the intent and the letter of the Constitution for the federal government to claim ownership over millions of acres of state land, including 90% of Nevada. And the mainstream media is spinning the trespass cattle angle as well. You know, if you had the idea that anyone that has cattle, Donnie's included, could right. just let them off grazing anywhere, that's not libertarianism, it's anarchy. No, it's Nevada law, not anarchy. This lady from England doesn't know anything about American cattle laws. In areas under open range law, cattle are free to wander and the cattle's owner is not responsible for damage to property unless they entered land enclosed by a legal fence. As a matter of fact, Nevada open range law criminalizes harassment of livestock on the open range. Livestock owners are also exempted from damages related to animals even on highways that pass through the open range. That's why there were warning signs as you enter the open range area. Now, they took down those warning signs and then put them back up again while we were there. In the East, most states have what's called herd district laws, where the owners must keep their cattle fenced in or be liable. I guess you could say this English lady had a herd mentality. Former Congressman Joe Scarborough completely ignores the jurisdictional issues and effectively labels him a welfare rancher. This, this, this guy for 20 years has, has been breaking the law, right. using federal land. He hasn't been paying the grazing fees that everybody else pays. For some reason, this guy thinks that the laws that apply to every other rancher in the United States of America don't apply to him. I guess Joe Scarborough would say that Rosa Parks thinks that laws that apply to other blacks don't apply to her. The laws that required her to sit in the back of the bus were both a violation of the Constitution's equal protection of the law as well as a violation of moral law. First, uh, I did not consider myself defying a court order that particular day. I consulted with my attorneys before the march and they stated that uh, they felt that it was an invalid order. On the other hand, I must be honest enough to say uh, that I do feel that there are two types of laws. One is a just law and one is an unjust law. I think we all have moral obligations to obey just laws. On the other hand, I think we have moral obligations to disobey unjust laws because non-cooperation with evil is as much a moral obligation as is cooperation with good. Yes, Bundy lost in a federal court, but remember it was the U.S. Supreme Court that told a slave who was trying to get his freedom, Dred Scott, that he had to return to slavery. And it was just last November in a tax court that a judge instructed the jury and said, it doesn't matter if what I am saying is unlawful or unconstitutional, do what I say or face contempt. Look, th this rancher has had his day in court and lost. He had his day in court in a federal court in which the issue was who owns this land, you, the state of Nevada, or the federal government. In my view, that case should have been tried in a state court and not in a federal court. The federal government, even the judiciary, the federal judiciary, should not be deciding what land the federal government owns. I was in the federal courts in Las Vegas when the ranchers scraped together enough money to try to appeal the ruling for them to remove the cattle off of this land. They said, you're ruling this. We can't remove this cattle. There's the only time of year there's any decent feed. They appealed it to the federal court. They hired one lawyer. Karen Budd was her name from Colorado. She stood up there and made a case that documented that the ranchers had improved the range. There were more turtles than before. That the range is more productive. And not only that, they're producing a commodity that's, that benefits all of society off of the desert 
There's only a couple people I know that's tough enough to live out here and make something worthwhile out of it. But this federal judge was under the Clinton administration, and he stood up and said, I'm finding in favor of the ranchers. And during this whole case, the BLM's lawyers, the state of Nevada's lawyers, the uh, conservation group, we had all of the greenies there. Every one of their lawyers got up to speak every time anything was said. And after they had lost the case, obviously they stood up, and the only thing they had to say was, you have no jurisdiction over EPA law. Hmm. And there were no rights to oppose the EPA in any regulation. When the bureaucracy realized that it was losing and said that the court didn't have jurisdiction, Mr. Bundy realized that the BLM, the Bureau of Land Management, was going beyond simply managing the land and using the grazing fees to pay for that management. It was using those grazing fees to drive ranchers out of business. And under regulation, right now there's not a person standing here, a business in this country, that can't be destroyed through federal regulation and harassment. Right. It's the IRS, it's OSHA, it's, your, it's everywhere you look. We have scores of alphabet agencies that write regulations that can shut down your small business or even entire industries. They can seize your property without compensation, not using eminent domain, not even giving you a jury trial. They write laws, they judge the laws, whether or not you're guilty of their own laws, and then they enforce them with their own police forces. They certainly can support him any way they want, but the guy needs to abide by the law. Yeah, I think, you know, it's why we have elections. If you don't agree with the law, you have a democratic process by which you can try and overturn the law. She said that's why we have elections? Well, the BLM is not on my ballot, and it's not on your ballot. It's not just taxation without representation, it's regulation without representation. The founders were concerned that power would be consolidated into one place. That's why they created a system of checks and balances, dividing power not only between the three branches of government, but between the federal government, the state government, and the people. The Tenth Amendment matters, the Enclave Clause matters, the Constitution matters. We need officials at the state and local level who will obey the Constitution, who understand how important it is to have a balance between federal and state government, who have the backbone to stand up and to do their constitutional duty. That's the only way that we're going to get control and balance back in our government. That's what this is really about. Well, that's it for our news portion tonight. Please consider getting a subscription to Prison Planet TV. It helps to support our operation. It's a very important way for you to get the information out to friends and family. And there's a lot of disinformation out there right now. We need to win this info war. We can win this info war. I've seen what happens when people stand together peacefully for their rights. We can back down this out of control government, these out of control fiefdoms, these alphabet bureaucracies. Join us tomorrow at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure the sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee. And it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. Members can share their passcodes with up to 11 other people, and your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.